All right, module one is going to be essentially a one point perspective, okay? Um, it, the, this is really more just an inspiration image than it is anything else, um, because what we're actually doing is creating an enclosure. The enclosure is going to be um, basically a roughly 300, maximum 300 square foot room. Um, and you'll have particular architectural elements that you need to design around that space in order to fully enclose it so you can't see any of the environment outside of it. Um, so uh, with that in mind, I guess, we'll, we'll kind of you know, roll forward. But the idea here, I think, in terms of composition is that we're focusing on one element in one space. And that's why I chose a one point perspective. So let's, uh, oh, and you guys have this available here in the drive already. So um, feel free to take the Word doc and you can write notes in it directly if you want. You can print it out, mark it up, whatever you want. That's there for you. I'm also going to save a PDF of it. Um, and you can't change the file and save over it because I think it's locked to my name. You can't edit it, I believe. So you'd want to save it as one of your own. Um, and you can't make it easier. So I have a backup if you figure out a way to do that. Ha, ha, ha. Um, OK, moving on. It's not a very long description. Um, we're, we're breaking it out sort of week by week. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of slow pitch it to you so that you really get a sense for how to set up a render. And, and we're, we'll have some sidebar conversations about best practices. We'll talk about efficiency. Um, we'll talk about the design process as you're preparing to create a singular image or representation. Um, but all of that stuff is going to happen. Basically, today we're going to create the architecture. And then uh, over the course of next week, we're going to set up a draft. And we're going to set the camera in a specific position. Um, and then, you know, possibly even modify the architecture in order to make it a little bit more effective. And then week three is going to be refining that scene. So we're running it on, we're going to run the render on production quality versus draft quality. We're going to look at lighting and change some basic elements about the lighting to change the, the sort of mood and feel of the space, um, as well as a really elementary look at lighting. Um, like actual lights, emitters, um, rather than environmental lighting. So that's why I have you preparing a space that is fully enclosed. Well, sort of. Um, so when you read through, uh, basically up here, the only important part, I think, is that you need one side absent. Um, and then the, the rough square footage or maximum square footage is 300 square feet. That's really the key. It's a, it's a relatively small space, but it's enough for you to have some flexibility. If you want to make it more intimate, you can go smaller. If you want to make it you know, pretty wide open, um, then you could go larger, I guess. Uh, so the components, let's talk about that. Uh, you saw me very briefly open up a, a file last week. Um, let me see if I can quickly get to it here. It was this guy. Think? Yeah, something like that. It's going to look kind of like this, right? These are these are kind of the components that you're going to be working on. Um, we're we're going to use beams and planes. That's basically it. So you know, architecture is made up of three things. It's made up of points, lines, and planes. You know, space I should say is made up of those three things. Um, and so we've got the point, right? We're using a one-point perspective for a singular focal point, right? So that's my that's my. Uh, my abstract adaptation of the definition of a point. So um, then we're going to work with lines and planes, which is essentially beams, structure, and planes, uh, or, or you know panels, which would be like skin. So um, <coughs> the beams have particular design um, requirements. They're, they're going to be measured in six inch increments. And it can be no larger than one foot wide by two feet deep. So it can be six inches deep and six inches tall, which is basically just a square. Um, or it can be a one by one or one by two. You know, so it's, it's all six inch increments. You can do whatever you want within that range. Um, planes are measured in one foot increments. So uh, a minimum of two feet in either direction and a maximum of 20 feet. So it can be two by 20 or it can be 20 by 20. Um, the, the difference, I think, 
in, in what you do with planes versus beams is that they have a particular ratio that I want you to stick to. And I'm not going to go through every single one of your planes on every single one of your models and measure it out. I'm just going to kind of ballpark it. So a 3 to 1 ratio is something where if you draw a square, right, it's like you put three of those squares next to one another. That's a 3 to 1 ratio. This is 3, that's 1. Is that clear? So if your panel is five feet tall, it can only be a maximum of 15 feet long. Got it? I think that's clear enough. You're all very smart. Um, so here's really, I guess, the key for both of those is that you can only have three different types of each. So you'll want to spend some time thinking of your aesthetic, what kind of space you want to create visually um, and pers perspectively before you go through that whole designing process. And I'll, I'll kind of help you along the way and show you how this, how you may want to go about doing this too. But uh, you can only have three different beam profiles. So that would be like a six inch by one foot or a six inch by two foot or a one foot by two foot. Like those are your three beam profiles. But they can be any length. They don't have to, you can't, or you, you don't need to say, I only have five foot long beams, 10 foot long beams, and 20 foot long. That's fine. You can stretch them as long as you want. Um, but you can only have three different plane sizes, and those planes are anything from a half inch to an inch thick. It's pretty simple. Okay, I don't want you guys to be thinking about the sizes of your architectural components. I want you to be thinking about the composition of your architectural components. Does that make sense? That's the only reason that section's there, really, because you'll get you'll get distracted by it. Yeah. Oh, sorry, what did you say was your definition of points? At least for this assignment. Uh, the one point perspective, oh, focusing okay. on one element in the space. Point, line, plane. You're going to hear that a lot. It's a very significant, fundamental thought. OK. Um, additional notes. Uh, it's very difficult to create a space without a floor. So you will have a ground plane, and that ground plane will be flat. So that's really more of a way to kind of orient you in the space so that it doesn't look like you're you know, flying into the channel on the Death Star and you don't know which way's up, right? You know what I'm talking about? seen in Star Wars? Yeah. Yeah. So um, you, you must model that one element in that space. Okay, it can be anything you want, something that inspires you, something that architecturally fits in the space, whatever you think is most appropriate for that space. It could be a person. It could be a, an abstract form that represents a person. It could be a sculpture. It, whatever it is, it needs to just be one thing. Um, and um, make sure that it's academically appropriate, please, more or less. Um, and then we're just going to uh, make sure, and we'll talk about materials a little bit further, but we're only going to focus on glossy and matte or just you know flat white um, for now. So glossy, flat white for your room materials, and then your actual showcase element within the space, that one element, can be anything on the grayscale spectrum. Okay, but that's not really relevant for this week yet. And then, uh, so the, the final deliverables. Um, right now, the requirements are, are for week two and week three. We're going to have a draft render that we submit at the end of week two. And we're going to have a production level render that we submit at the end of week three. Um, I do have another line item on here that says a section render. That's if we have time. I'm hoping we can fit that in now because that's going to help us prepare for what's to come in the future too. Okay, that's it. Go. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Um, we're gonna. I'm gonna walk you through it. So, yeah. Week one. You guys are already going. Um, what questions do you have? Yes. Are you sure we should record it? Record it? I did record that one. Oh, you did. Yeah. Thank you for the reminder, though. That's a great example, actually. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm thinking of the right one. I'm really bad. You guys will come to learn that I'm really bad at architecture names, just like songs. You know, like I like the song, I know the song, but I, if you ask me what it's called, for the life of me, I couldn't tell you. So I think that this is the one that's like a singular room with the cross at the end of the room. Yeah, this guy. So that's a great example. Um, the only difference is 
this is open up directly to the outside. I'm okay with you guys making a little bit of a move like that, but I don't want to see like a full window. You know, like this is kind of more what I was uh, thinking because you're getting environmental light, but you're not really seeing the outside. You get what I mean? So it's really, it's going to be a study of ambient lighting versus, you know, focal point lighting if we should want it. So anyway, that's a very good example. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. So let me uh, stop this video and then we'll get right into setting everything up.